Good afternoon. It's Thursday, May 4th. I'm Laura Cornfield, and this is IBA News broadcasting live from Jerusalem. U.S. President Donald Trump vowed to broker peace talks between Israel and the Palestinians, saying he is optimistic about prospects for such a deal. Trump's statements came after his first meeting with Palestinian President Mahmoud Abbas in the White House yesterday. On his part, the Palestinian president said the U.S. president's statements left him hopeful, and he believes that Trump can play an important role as mediator in peace talks between Israel and the Palestinians. According to reports, President Trump told Abbas that the Palestinians must stop all incitement and halt payments to the families of terrorists jailed in Israel for perpetrating attacks against the Jewish state. At a joint press conference, Abbas said the Palestinians' strategic choice is to attain peace based on the two-state solution, a Palestinian state based on the 1967 borders with East Jerusalem as its capital. I'm committed to working with Israel and the Palestinians to reach an agreement. But any agreement cannot be imposed by the United States or by any other nation. The Palestinians and Israelis must work together to reach an agreement that allows both peoples to live, worship, and thrive and prosper in peace. And I will do whatever is necessary to facilitate the agreement, to mediate, to arbitrate anything they'd like to do. But I would love to be a mediator or an arbitrator or a facilitator, and we will get this done. Peace also means defeating ISIS and other terrorist groups. These groups are a threat to all people who cherish human life. I know President Abbas has spoken out against ISIS and other terrorist groups, and we must continue to build our partnership with the Palestinian security forces to counter and defeat terrorism. Following his meeting at the White House, Palestinian President Abbas met U.S. Secretary of State Rex Tillerson at a ho hotel in Washington. The two discussed further ways to implement Trump's commitment to advance peace talks. Tillerson reiterated the U.S. administration's commitment to do whatever is necessary to broker peace between the two sides. As part of his three-day visit to Washington, Abbas is also slated to meet a delegation of representatives of the Palestinian community in the U.S., as well as a number of Jewish community leaders and Arab ambassadors in Washington. Meanwhile, in Brussels, Regional Cooperation Minister Tzachi Negbi met today with Trump's special envoy for international negotiations, Jason Greenblatt, to get a first-hand briefing on the talks between Trump and Abbas. The two met on the sidelines of today's ad hoc liaison committee gathering in the Belgian capital. Hanegbi was quickly dispatched to Brussels overnight by Prime Minister Netanyahu, who heard that Greenblatt will attend the 15-member AHLC meeting, which serves as a major policy-level mechanism for development assistance to the Palestinian people and is co-sponsored by the U.S. and the European Union. The impromptu meeting between Hanegbi and Greenblatt was arranged within a very short time. Speaking to Israel Radio today, Hanegbi said the Israeli government is continuously extending its hand out to peace and the Likud's 30 mandates reflect the public's desire to achieve that goal. Hanegbi added he does not expect any breakthrough to come out of the Trump-Abbas meeting and stressed that the U.S. president stuck to his position not to force a solution on the two sides. Israel has yet to receive assurances from German President Frank Walter Steinmeier that he will refrain from meeting left-wing NGOs when he visits the Jewish state next week. This after relations between the two countries took a turn for the worst after Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu canceled a meeting with visiting German Foreign Minister Sigmar Gabriel last week because of his meeting with the NGOs breaking the silence and B'Tselem during his trip. Officials in Israel said the German president's three-day visit to Israel has not yet been finalized and expressed concern that he may also meet with the NGOs. In explaining his decision, Netanyahu said he refuses to meet with visiting diplomats who choose to meet with organizations that defame IDF soldiers and attempt to prosecute them as war criminals. Border police deployed near the Cave of the Patriarchs in Hebron shot a Palestinian terrorist welding a knife who raced towards them and attempted to stab them. The injured terrorist, who was shot in the stomach, is a 25-year-old resident of Hebron. His condition was described as moderate, and he was taken to Hadassah Hospital in Ain Karim for treatment. No Israelis were injured in the attack. Meanwhile, IDF forces operating in the West Bank overnight arrested 12 Palestinian fugitives suspected of terrorist activities. In Judea, troops uncovered a weapons manufacturing shop in a village near Yatta.
during a search in a home in Beit Fajar. Soldiers uncovered a homemade weapon, and in Beit Sahur near Bethlehem, troops also confiscated another homemade weapon and air rifle. The Shin Bet Security Agency revealed today the recent arrest of a number of Palestinians, including a lawyer, all members of a West Bank terror cell who perpetrated shooting attacks against Israeli civilians and soldiers in the Samaria region. According to the Shin Bet, the terrorists were responsible for shooting attacks in the Janine, Nablus, and Tulkarim areas. Among those arrested were Luis Ahmed Shafiq Zabna, a lawyer affiliated with the Popular Front for the Liberation of Palestine, and his cousin Shafiq Mahmoud Zabna, both from the town of Fahma near Janine. During their arrest, security forces also seized weapons hidden inside the headboard of a child's bed and a number of vehicles used by the terror cell to perpetrate attacks. Some 50 Palestinian leaders from different factions announced plans to join the hunger strike launched 17 days ago by Palestinian security prisoners affiliated with the Fatah incarcerated in Israel. Among those set to join the strike are Ahmed Saadat, the Secretary General of the Popular Front for the Liberation of Palestine, Hamas leader Abbas al Sayyad, and head of the Islamic Jihad Prisoners Committee, Zaid Basaisi. Fatah leader Marwan Barghouti, currently serving five life sentences, initiated the strike. The prisoners are demanding pay phones be installed in their prison wings, expand visit relatives' visits, and be allowed further education. Only a small fraction of the some 6,500 Palestinian security prisoners are participating in the strike. Relatives of the prisoners are calling on the International Red Cross to intervene and call on Israeli prison officials to alleviate prison conditions and impose reforms. Well, we like to remind the concerned authorities that the Palestinian detainees are protected under the Four Geneva Convention, Article 27. So it's their right to have uh, visited, family visit in the places of detention. From the moment, it's not an ICRC decision. So our main uh, activity at the moment, apart from uh, making sure that the rights are respected, that the oral greetings are collected and transferred to the families to, you know, alleviate this uh, distress that the hunger strike is creating for the society and also for the, for the detainees. The new Hamas charter supporting the establishment of a transitional Palestinian state alongside Israel is more of a propaganda ploy than a change in their ideology. This according to Gerald Steinberg, political science professor at Bar-Ilan University. He spoke with IBA's Ari O'Sullivan. You've got Abbas his great rival, Hamas's great rival, is now meeting with the president. Well, Hamas doesn't want to look too off the wall, too entirely radical, extreme, non-players. They want to be players. So this is directed at the United States. It's directed at the Palestinian audience. I don't think it's directed at all at the Israelis. It is. The Israelis are irrelevant. There's also a line in there about uh, distancing themselves from the Muslim Brotherhood. Yeah. Well, that's aimed at the Egyptians. Mm -hmm. It's also, perhaps one can say, aimed at the, the Western media, there's been some spin, although I think it's been more careful. The New York Times had a pretty carefully written article which talked about these different audiences and, and distinguished between the charter, which stays the same, and even the goals of this document. We want to get rid of Israel, but we want to do it in a kinder, gentler way, is what this document says. Do you think Israel played into the hands of Hamas by rejecting it? Maybe they should have embraced it. First of all, Israel's irrelevant in this anyway. Israel wasn't part of the audience. But also because the basic principles, how can you embrace a document that still calls for your destruction, that talks about your national movement being immoral, illegal, claiming all these things that I they claimed in there? It's not a bluff. Mm -hmm. it's, it's internal politics. And in many cases, it's better for Israel to stay out of that. And it, you can't, in, in terms of if you're looking at it as a poker game, with, with terrorist group like Hamas, there's no middle ground. There's no way to, to reach an agreement. So if you legitimize a, a document which is entirely designed for propaganda, there is a, uh, I think there's a negative impact, not a positive impact in that. A new agreement signed between Israel and Austria, geared for 200 young people from the age of 18 to 30, grants them a six-month tourist visa to visit each other's countries and permission to work during the period the visa is valid. The foreign ministry said the working visa agreement signed between the two countries will go into effect on May 16th. The Asia Tea Party, led by M.K. Yair Lapid, was fined tens of thousands of shekels for using sensitive information on Holocaust survivors to promote the party's agenda in the last election to the Knesset. The Justice Ministry's Israel Law, Information and Technology Authority, tasked with examining the party's activities, 
after receiving complaints of alleged wrongdoing, said the Yeshatid party will be fined 40,000 shekels and the Center of Organizations of Holocaust Survivors in Israel, who provided the party with information concerning survivors, was handed a 15,000 shekel fine. According to the probe findings, Holocaust survivors did not consent to use the information given to Lapid by Colette Avital, the chairman of the Organization of Holocaust Survivors, violating the Personal Privacy Act. Turning now to the ongoing saga surrounding the new Broadcasting Corporation bill, the Knesset plenum is slated to convene later this evening to vote on the first reading of the revised law proposal, which calls for the establishment of an independent news division that will be separate from the new Broadcasting Corporation. Opposition MKs announced they will boycott tonight's special Knesset session to protest what they called the undemocratic way the government was passing laws during the spring break. The amended law is expected to be fast-paced through the first, second, and third readings before May 15th, the date the Israel Broadcasting Authority is set to close and the new Broadcasting Corporation begin. Coalition head Likud MK David Bitan, who is chairing a special committee on the matter, intends to hold marathon debate sessions on the revised bill next Sunday, Monday, and Tuesday with the aim of passing the bill in its second and third readings next Wednesday. Efforts are still underway to include English news broadcasts in the new law. Britain's Archbishop of Canterbury, Justin Welby, visited holy sites to Jews and Muslims in Jerusalem yesterday and later laid a wreath at the Yad Vashem Holocaust Museum in the capital. Accompanied by Britain's chief rabbi, Ephraim Mervis, the Archbishop also prayed at the Western Wall and visited the Temple Mount, where he affirmed the Jewish people's ties to the holy site. Welby, whose next port of call is Jordan in the framework of a 10-day visit to the region, described his trip as a pilgrimage and thanked Rabbi Mervis for showing him the holy sites in Jerusalem's old city. Temple Mount is, is uh, the site of the historic temple, uh, and that is the very heart of, uh, uh, of the people of Israel over many, many centuries and uh, millennia, in fact. We see uncovered, even in England, afresh that sense of anti-Semitism, which goes so, must go so deeply into the root of our culture. Until that is expelled from our culture, there will be a, a taproot for all racism, all discrimination, all cruelty. Turning to entertainment and tickets are still available for the final concert of the jazz series at the Israel Opera House in Tel Aviv. Rochelle Farrell will make her Israeli debut on Friday the 19th of May. While she covers a wide range of musical genres, she is best known for her talent as a contemporary jazz artist. Her six octave range and unique sound has won her rave reviews by critics around the world. The 53-year-old performer will be accompanied by a three-piece ensemble. That's Rochelle Farrell on Friday the 19th of May. Tickets run between 125 and 200 shekels. And good news for Israeli travelers, the national carrier El Al has announced plans to begin non-stop flights between Tel Aviv and Miami, Florida. According to El Al, the flights will begin in November, becoming the carrier's sixth route to North America, in addition to non-stop flights to New York, New Jersey, Los Angeles, Boston, and Toronto. Emilio Gonzalez, director of Miami Dade Aviation, said Israel has always been one of their top strategic targets because of its deep cultural ties with Miami and its historical significant global location. In local money matters, shares were mixed on the Tel Aviv Stock Exchange and end-of-week trading, while the shekel was mixed in foreign currency trading. Here are the numbers. And the IBA weather team says there will be no significant changes in temperatures tomorrow, but they are expected to rise slightly on Saturday. Here are the highs and lows at home and abroad.
that's all for this newscast. Join us again on Sunday, same time, same channel. Until then, I'm Laura Cornfield wishing you a good evening and Shabbat Shalom from Jerusalem.